guys are into moss too, if you have any like, you know, big crevices and stuff and you get things stuck in there, you can always use a little paintbrush to try to help you get all the little bits out so they're not stuck to your piece. All right, so guys, one one other thing to know about glaze is generally uh, glaze does not stain. Um, so if you get a little glaze on you, don't worry about it. If it's one of the ones that like looks real red, then uh, it might stain. But I'm not. I don't think I've ever had one that truly has stained before. So once your piece is all rinsed out, okay. You take your glazes and I'm going to, I'm going to, I have to decide and you guys probably have already kind of made this decision, which one you're going to do first for the first layer. Okay. And if you guys are working on your glaze thing still, um, you need to kind of pay attention to me because I don't want to do this again tomorrow. Okay. So, mm. Uh, oh, and I'll put here, I'll put my screen so you guys can see a little closer what I'm doing over here. But do you see or hear how much I shake these up? Okay. You really want to, if you get one that's really dry and sounds chunky, you got to tell me, I'll try to fix them up as best as we can. What? Um, we're making tumbleweeds. Oh. All right, so I'm going to start with this. I picked out these three colors, moss green, ultramarine, jewel, and vivid orange. And I'm going to start with my green and cover almost all of my piece. And I would suggest that you guys pick one color to do that with two. And then you can always wipe it off in certain areas, but we want to make sure that all the crevices are covered. So actually I'm gonna do something super fun, get a bowl. So under the sink over there, I have a bunch of bowls. You might have to rinse them out first. Because we don't wanna contaminate our glazes at all. So if you're at home and you can find some sort of bowl or container, you can do this too, although you guys have a lot less glaze. So usually I find something that I can like prop this up with. Uh, and you know what? I will do. So something like that so that I can set this on if I can. Oh, there we go. And then I can actually pour my glaze over it, which is really fun. Because then it's going to get in all of the pieces. Because I want to make sure the inside or in between all these little crevices that I created. I want to make sure that the glaze gets in there. And I might have to get a little messy in a second because I'm not going to be able to pour every section of this. I can pour a lot. I'm gonna get inside my little thing here. So this consistency glaze, if you can kind of see, this is a great consistency for pouring. And it's even going on the outside of my piece, which is cool. And if you do this, feel free to pour out the entire contents of the bottle if you want. Now I have to find a place to pick it up, which is not easy, but I'm going to do it anyway and get a little bit messy. <clears throat> there, is that Mardi Gras? Uh, yeah, you're going to have to 
Yeah, though, wait a minute. All right, so because of what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually brush a little bit of this around. And I'm gonna make sure that it gets out of all the holes that I made. Now, when you normally when you pour, you're not gonna touch it like I'm doing, but I just wanna coat this, this guy. I don't want like all three layers to be this. So I'm okay with just kind of brushing some of it off. The hard part is uh, the fact that I have a mask on and can't like blow through these holes, but I might have to do that in a second anyway. Sometimes just a little gravity helps to get it out of the little pieces because it's kind of gone inside all of my little nooks and crannies. Isn't that what it's about to do? Yeah, yeah, but it's like stuck inside some of the bigger holes. Oh. And I don't want it to fill them up. You don't want to fill a section with glaze. So because I have these little holes that go up quite a ways. Where are my tools? I don't want to do that. So like there is this one i'm going to show the camera but oh here i'll show this camera too see that i didn't do that yet you see this it's like inside there so i want to like drain it a little bit out but that's just my particular piece i don't know what you guys have going on and then i have actual holes that i don't want to get plugged up completely on this guy so i'm going to take a tool and this probably will happen no matter whether you whether you um, pour it or paint it. It's just something that you have to do. What's actually easier is, excuse me, to do this. Yep, breathing on with germs. You guys are not going to lick the glaze, so it's not a big deal. But that, I, you know, I just say these things just to make sure. But you know what? I don't want. Yeah, don't eat paint or glue. Do you guys, are those kinds of kids, you can use any paintbrush over there. Yep. The fluffier, the better. Some. Some people have been taking them and using them for paint, which is a big kind of no-no. All right, so I got it off most of the holes. It keeps kind of going in them, so you kind of have to play a little race if you have any of those sections. Oh, there goes my mask. But you notice you will make a certain amount of a mess, and that's okay. I'm gonna move my bowl over and put it down for a minute. Put my mask back on. Now, if, if you have, you know, some of these little parts, I can take a smaller paintbrush and take some of that out too. You can also kind of spread it around this way too. So if you missed any nooks and crannies that you want to get to, you can do that. But this way, pouring, guys, really saves you a little bit of time because I don't have to wait too long. I mean, this is going to dry, but I don't have to wait and do three more coats or two more coats. This is probably enough for this glaze in most areas. So you just want to kind of pay attention to where, where you're going to glaze the other 
or put the other glazes. The other thing that I want to do is I want to make sure I get this glaze that's in this bowl back in this jar because I don't want it to dry out. So that's always the fun part. Most of the jars are now wide mouthed, so it's very easy to pour it back in. Some of them are narrow, and if you need a funnel, uh, just tell me and I'll point out where they are. Uh, but generally, if you hold the bowl up high enough, you can get a nice little stream and use your paintbrush to bring it back down into the bowl, I mean into the jar. And then what I'll actually do, if I'm not done with this color, I'll use what's left in the bowl to paint my piece as much as possible, to save as much as possible. And I think that you guys will kind of understand why now, because you've seen how much some of these jars cost, right? <clears throat> that it's best if we can save as much as possible. Fox. Lily painted it for me. Yeah, a little bit of soap. Yeah, I think, I think that'll be fine. It really doesn't take that much of the soap. All right. Yeah, start. Go for it. I'm just going to keep, like, doing things and talking about stuff and keep doing it. And you guys can see how I'm doing it. You know, and you can kind of see how it how it dries, but you're gonna kind of figure it out as you do it too. Um, I would suggest it, but you could you can yours has like different lobes. Like I could have, like taken and just done one lobe, one color and one the other, and you can do that. So if you want to, like you could just hold it over the bowl and pour over one area if you want. It's up to you. You don't have to pour it all if you don't want to. Well, but how thick is too thick? Of the glaze or how much you put on? Uh, of the glaze. Let me come check. Yeah, so if you get if you get glaze on the bottom, it doesn't matter at this point. You're going to either wipe it off or decide to put it on a stilt. So no worries there. You can use anything you need to as long as you clean it off when you're done. I glaze all over my bottom. Now, right now, if any of you look at me, I'm glazing the bottom, but I'm going to show you why. Because not all of this bottom is going to hit the kiln shell, so I'm going to wipe some of it off. But I want it in that texture.
like that. So sorry. This, no, it's okay. This, this was not I am. Um, there's no extra keys to give me. No. Are you going in block one? Every day, block two. Every day. Every day, block two. Oh my god, is this almost over? I think. Sorry, I'm just yeah, going to the wrong one. I might have to help you come in and do this. That will open the door and the booth. All right, I want to show you guys this real quick because I know this is this is a piece that I'm going to, you know, I tell you to not glaze the bottom and then I glaze the bottom. So, okay. hey, you can't see very well up here, but oh, how can I make that better? Um, I'm just wiping off. One of the things I really like to do on my own work is I glaze my signature, okay? So I glaze my signature, but then I'm going to wipe it off. And some of the glaze is going to stick in my signature, okay? And it might take me a couple sponges just because this glaze is dark. But I can easily wipe this glaze off the bottom where it's going to hit. And because I have a piece over here with texture, I'm going to take some of that glaze off. Now I need to do this one more time, but that's what it kind of looks like when it's take it off once and then I need to do it again you don't, don't want to pour the glaze, you don't have to do the pouring part, okay? You can just paint it on. You don't have to pour, okay? So if you don't want to make a mess or don't have a bowl, that's just fine, okay? So at this point, you guys need to clean up, okay? I would keep your newspaper and your piece on your newspaper and put it in your cubby for those that are here. For the rest of you, it's up to you whether you want to glaze. Well, there's only one of you that has glaze, so Olivia, you get to decide. But you are absolutely fine to leave these alone for an entire day, an entire week if you wanted, and then continue glazing on top, okay? And you guys, before you leave, might want to just check out kind of what I've done and what it looks like on the bottom so you kind of have an idea. what you can do and how you can wipe it off and I also you know how the red any of the glazes that look red even though this is green this is moss green it'll turn that color in the firing but it looks you know the glaze having red in it probably has some iron oxide or something in it and it does stain a little bit you don't have to wipe the bottom right now you can do it later so just set it on top of a piece of newspaper in your cubby. 
Just so it'll dry, it'll dry tomorrow. You can take glaze off when it's dry or when it's wet. It's very easy. So you can wait until the very last moment. I just had so much chunkiness on the bottom. I thought I'd do it now and show you guys. Well, it's weird because it was like a strap. Okay, last block I showed them how to pour in using a bowl like this. See my bowl? What? Yeah. So I propped up my piece on like a little, a little plastic thing, and then I poured the glaze right over on my C form. Okay, so check this out. So that's what I was able to cover with just pouring the glaze over. And I had to go around and like, oh, I still have to. Wait, all the bronze cups with glaze? Yep. Damn. So <clears throat> I have to go around and I had to like blow the um, glaze out of the little holes. It's fun. Yo, can I bring something I made from Atria that I never really experienced with glaze? Yeah. Yeah. It's a tile that I made in a skating class. Yeah. Excuse absolutely. Me. Like, glaze. I don't need glaze. She wouldn't let you glaze it? No, like, well, not just because she's mean, but like, also that, and because she didn't have time. Oh, okay. She definitely had, could have made time. I know she did. Yeah. She, 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 she. Maybe. <sighs> okay, I'm recording. <laughs> Remember? Yeah. Look at everybody now. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. I know I'm glitchy. I give up. All right, so what I want to show you guys, see this mug right here? Oh, sadness. This is brand new. This is sucks. Okay, I'll use another one. This one's already. When am I gonna fire them? As soon as you're done glazing. Like. You're probably not going to finish glazing today, so I'll glaze them tomorrow, and then so when you come back after break, they'll be done. Okay, I'm going to show you how to pour glaze. Ready? Look, it's fun. Uh, red's not looking. You can watch me here, or you can watch me there. I'll make myself bigger. Sorry. Ready? This is how we glaze. Okay, so this is normally what I do, like if you have pottery, uh, you know, with something with an inside, it's actually really easy because you just pour it in and you turn it around. So you get all of the spaces and then you just pour it out and the inside is done. As long as that's all I want it to be orange. Oh, this is a huge thing. And you just, you can use a paintbrush and paint it on if you want to. But if you want the inside of something to be just solid one color, this is the easiest way to do it because you only have to pour once. I want to do a different color on the inside. Chunk. I want to do a crystal. You can. You can do that. But that's like literally all I have to do because it's just that one glaze. The first layer usually dries pretty quickly. The other thing is I normally will tell you if you have a bowl kind of thing, a cup, I would glaze the inside before you glaze the outside because then you can touch it, right? If I glaze the outside, then I no longer can touch the inside. I mean the outside. I can't touch it then. And if anybody wants to, like, I have all these mugs from last year. If anybody just wants to, like, practice glazing, you're welcome to, like, grab one out of it. I have no idea who they are, and nobody's come to get them. So I'm just going to keep glazing them. Yeah. Have your pick. There's some with initials on the bottom that if I know who they are, I'll glaze them for them and then give them to them maybe or something. But Yep. 
<laughs> yeah, go take a look. Just show me, show me which one before, because there's a few probably that I don't want to glaze. Or don't want you guys to glaze, I guess. Alright. Yeah, does it say anything on the bottom? CRB. No, no idea. Go ahead, glue it. All right, let me go clean this out. The Juarez. <laughs> the Juarez. Uh, he's skinny and wears a hat, and he's like, "Oh, that's fine." We just talked about his car. That's fine. Do like, kind of like, have like tan skin? Uh, no. Uh, he's very fucking like, Asian. Like, uh, yeah, like Asian. Yeah, like Asian. Yeah, like Asian. That's not gonna stay, but you know what? We're gonna let it happen. Is it okay for me to glaze the uh, candle and be in a different color? Yes. Nice. You just don't want to glaze the bottom of the cup. Yep. No, no, that part's fine. I want to put it there, but I don't want to Uh, yeah. Well, no, I mean up here. There's not enough space. I mean, like this here. Yeah. That looks sick. But I don't want to risk it. I'm going to let it look for a second. I don't have a clean part left. So some glazes will cover in two coats. Not all of them will. Okay, but not exactly. Like the A glazes, you can get away with two coats. You might even be able to get away with one coat. But yeah, but you said it didn't come out good. Came out like as if like it needs one more coat to be perfect. <laughs> so I know what I'm talking about. I vaguely remember that it looked better before you glazed it. Yeah, because I freaking like literally randomly I was like screw this. I ran like a bunch of glazes on. Okay, so I did the plants. Don't do that though. All right, so my piece is dry to the touch. Uh, I think I can actually see both this area now. Yep. Okay. Um, this piece is dry to the touch right now. It has a, a layer of dripped on or poured on moss green right now. So obviously it doesn't look green right now, but that's okay. Um, it is not supposed to. So now comes the fun part where I've covered most of my piece in that initial first glaze. There's a few little um, places that I need to get. There's like a little mark right there, a little empty spot. Um, I did wipe off the bottom for the most part. I'll probably have to do another wipe off when I'm done. Um, but for the most part, I can see, you know, I can, I can even see a bunch of my white, so I might not need completely all of that clear and I can probably do the bottom of that um, but that's how you tell but I still have some other parts to do obviously inside this guy and there's inside some of these little pieces so the fun part now is for me to take the other color so I'm gonna put moss green back because I already did that so I have uh, ultramarine jewel out and I already put a little bit on I went inside 
this guy and I put a layer of the ultramarine jewel. And you can see in here that there's these little specks, um, little chunks that are stuck in there. And that is the good part. Those are the little crystals that are gonna burst. Um, and I like that part. So I even wanna get more. I'm gonna make sure in my CTL that I dig down to the bottom because that's where the crystals tend to go. And I'm gonna get a little bit more and I don't want this glaze to like drip out of this piece. So I'm going to be a little cautious with how much glaze I put on this outer rim right here at the bottom, because it already has some layers uh, to it. So I'm going to first kind of get some up here and I can even drip it a little bit, try to get most of those chunks. There's a great big chunk right there. You can kind of place them where you want them a little bit um but i i kind of like the random look just this is what i get for this so i'm gonna go and kind of paint a little bit on my paper here because there's a little bit of the edge that i can still see and i want it to be covered a little bit <clears throat> and i'll just kind of use the paper to get the rest off so then i'm gonna go around and go okay where else do i want this change in color to be um, so if everything's mostly green, where else do I want this? And I think what I really would like is for this big piece right here to have ultramarine um, on the outside, but not on the barnacles. So what I might have to do is switch brushes because this one's really big. And I'm going to switch to a smaller one. I'm try to save some of my glaze here off my paintbrush and just set that aside for now and use this one to just put a little bit of glaze around all of those barnacles on this piece. And it doesn't have to be perfect because glaze never is. Um, but I do want to, I'm hoping to get some of those crystals. It's hard when you use a little paintbrush like this. I'm going to have to dig down to the bottom again, stir it up. I want to see those little crystals come, but I don't want to have too much on my paintbrush at one point in time because I don't want to cover up all those holes again that I worked so hard to get the glaze out of. Oh, there's a nice big chunk. I got a little bit on my barnacle, so I'm just going to wipe it away with my finger. Keep going. Now, whenever you have uh, made actual holes in the side of your pieces like this, you want to be careful about how much glaze you get inside them because they can close right up. So what happens to glaze in the kiln is that it it kind of bubbles up and so the surface will actually get a little bit bigger um, and then it will when it cools back down it gets a little bit smaller but what can happen in those little holes is it can completely cover your holes so this is kind of a nice way to paint to make sure I can get most of the edge down here and I'm watching to see where is the is going to potentially hit the kiln gel. I'm going to hit that little spot that I saw. So when you have a piece that is abstract, like our C forms are, most of our C forms are, you really can be creative with the glazes and you don't have to have every layer of glaze be exactly the same thickness everywhere. Um, now when you're glazing like a, a, a mug that you're gonna drink out of, yeah, you really probably want it to be all the same thickness. Um, but on this piece, especially with these kind of glazes, the CTLs, um, or even um, the A glazes, you can, you can make some layers that are a little thicker than others to see um, what's going to happen. And 
and I have one hole right here that is um, closed up and somewhere I have a pin tool that I can fix that with. I'll do that after I finish glazing this part because I don't want to lose the edge of where I'm glazing. So I've kind of done over here and I got to do in this area. I just covered my holes back up. The thing I love about glaze is that it is kind of like magic. You don't necessarily know what's going to happen each time that you fire something. Um, so it's really fun for me to kind of make some guesses on what might look good together and see what happens. And sometimes I'll purposely make a strange combination. And I, I think this one's a little strange, you know, using the, the orange, uh, vivid orange and using the moss green. And I would never just put the vivid orange and moss green together. Um, but I'm curious to see what happens with them when they're layered with this um, ultramarine jewel. All right, so I've got most of the bottom. I'm gonna get just this rim. I want to make sure I get that. And I think inside I'm gonna I'm gonna go in with a different color. Um, I think I'm gonna go on the inside and do some of the vivid orange over the moss green and see what happens, which seems really strange. What is orange going to do over green? And I have no idea, but it's on the inside. So if it's really ugly, it's on the inside. I might put a little candle in there or something, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but I'm curious to see what would happen. Um, some of these other little white areas that I can see inside my barnacles, I don't want to leave those plain. I want to get these those too, so I'll probably get an even smaller brush than this one and get some of that vivid orange right on the inside of them and see what that does, give it a little pop of color. Um, the other thing I want to think about is, um, you know, if there's somewhere on here that I want to wipe off and put another color on top, that would be really interesting. Um, so my, you know, my process is trying to think about, I have to remember where I put what, kind of, um, to see which, you know, which colors I'm getting in which different spaces and whether I think it's going to be darker or not. You know, where do I want that moss green to just shine by itself? Um, which I have that on, um, I think it's these little, I don't know what I call them, um, but these little pieces I think are going to stay the green color. Um, the barnacles, I might, I'm going to do a little bit of orange in the middle and see what happens with that. Um, these little, you know what, I might change something because I want, I'd like to try the vivid orange over the ultramarine jewel. So I need to pick a place to wipe off. I need a little bit more water on my sponge. So actually, I think I'll do the tall pieces. So they'll kind of go from orange to green. So I'm going to just take my sponge and start cleaning some of these off on the top. So they'll be kind of moss green in the middle because I already dumped that on. And sometimes I just go around with the first time I'm going to wipe and I'll just soften that glaze up a little bit, but you can see the glaze comes off very, very easily. And if you could use a sponge, you can kind of control where you're going to take things off. And I'll even get like a different look if I leave part of it on. So I might do that. Just, it's also easier because not all of it is going to come off. Um, just because of the shapes of my pieces. So we'll see what happens with this. So wipe it off, clean it up as best as I can where I want to, and then I'm going to take that orange. Maybe I'll do the orange underneath the ultramarine. Oh, 
it'll be interesting to see what happens with the change of color and I think that's more interesting to see especially when we're talking about you know ocean pieces I think there's a lot of colors in the bottom of the ocean when you think of like a coral reef there's a lot of different colors um, and I don't think everything is just one color you know so we don't want to just pick blue and color everything blue because it's in the water you know um, I think there's other lots of other colors in the ocean and we saw that in our jam board at the very beginning of this project when we uh, found inspirational pictures of the ocean we found a lot of different colors so I'm gonna try this it's it would take me quite a while to like get some of this other stuff off so I think I'm gonna try with that I'm okay with that I like just the look of it here where it has kind of that difference in color I'd like to get a little more off that one I like that look um, I think it'll be interesting kind of like they're morphing into different colors um, so these are moss green and I think I'm gonna keep them that way this is ultramarine on top of moss green so one thing at a time, I guess. Um, I do want to take some of the off, some of the glaze off this one because it has such great texture. I want to put something else there too. Maybe the orange. Maybe that's where we do the orange over the green and see what happens. All right, so I'm wiping off stuff that I don't want to. So we're gonna take the vivid orange. And I've already shaken these up. I'm going to take another big fluffy brush. And I'm going to paint the orange on top. Now, before I do, if I want to do ultramarine on top of this, I'm going to have to let this dry. But I can slop it on there pretty good. This one's fun because it actually is orange and looks pretty, pretty true to the color. So that's kind of fun. It'll be easier to tell where I put this one. Because the other two are so close in their kind of natural state right now that it's hard to know which one's which. All right, and I think I'm also going to try a little, a little orange here, just lightly over, so 
I can get just a little bit of a touch of a different color. As I see a little spot that has nothing on it. Now I kind of got the other the other pieces, so I'm just going to kind of wipe it so it's not very much, so it doesn't really affect the, ch the color that much. All I'm doing on the back is just a little bit here and there. Okay, where it's not going to be seen. Alright, so this is kind of looking interesting mm -hmm. to me. And I think the next step is to, I got to do the inside of this. And I feel like, you know what, it, I mean, just looking at it, thinking of three different colors and not necessarily planning which color is which, I have all this orange over here, but nothing on this side. So I think I'm going to go ahead um, and take the orange and do that inside. And I'm going to really cover up those empty white parts that I had and then I'm going to paint over all of it with orange and I'm just going to kind of sponge it on I think so it has a potential different look to it. Um, there's a little spot that was still wet from the other color and I don't really want to mix them together so I'll try to kind of get that off my brush um, and just keep spreading. You don't know what will happen if you take two glazes and mix them together. So it's not an experiment that we want to do. If it happens on your piece, you can just leave it. It's fine, but um, you don't want to generally get into the habit of mixing them. They are, you got to think these are recipes. So if you took two different recipes for bread and stuck them together, you might get a brick, you know? Um, so you don't want to just mix the two recipes together at the bottom because you don't know what's going to happen and it could really mess up your piece. So that is generally not a good idea. And I'm going to have to wait to let that dry to do a little bit more of the orange because I know there's a couple of spots and I kind of know where they are that I need to go in and do that. And the rest of it that's painted on top it um because i poured it on it's gonna have plenty of glaze in there so i don't need to build up a huge layer but on those empty exposed pieces i definitely do um, one of the other things that i wanted to do is paint the inside of some of these barnacles orange so i need a small paintbrush oh and i have one right here so i don't generally use tiny paintbrushes in a lot in ceramics um, because I think glazing things in a bigger color is better. But in this instance, I really do need a little help. So I'm gonna go inside each one, even the ones that are colored in something else. And I like that contrast that I'm seeing. Um, who knows if it'll be that much contrast when I fire it, but it probably will because it'll be orange and green. And we don't know what's going to happen when we mix the orange and green together or not mix but layer so we don't know which is fun and i think because i have this look of like two different barnacles i think i'm just going to do this orange on these barnacles uh, i might use this little little brush to get in some of the little areas i really couldn't before Couple of announcements for this morning, attention student drivers, if you are driving to school and do not have a parking sticker, you need to have your parking sticker by tomorrow the 15th. All drivers need a sticker by tomorrow the 15th. Juniors, the registration deadline for the June 5th SAT test is May 6th. Register at collegeboard.org. College See your guidance counselor for more information. Now is the time for your junior meeting with your guidance counselor. At the meeting, you will talk about your senior year and life beyond high school. To make your appointment, in-person learners see Ms. Sheldon in guidance office. Remote learners call Ms. Sheldon at 247-3141, extension 2268. Ms. Mulcahy, Ms. Curtis, 
Mr. Friends and Mr. Roulette will let, hope to see you soon. So this part was dry and I'm just putting that extra second coat on that I need. And I might even put a little bit more of a third coat on the top parts where it was completely exposed. But at this point, I really need to let it dry and think about what I did and think about if I want to do any other changes. There's still, I gotta do something about the inside of a few of these barnacles, but I don't want those ones orange. So I have to make a decision on those. So at this point, I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna let it really dry um, for a couple hours and clean up my mess and then kind of go back and ask myself what I what I want to do next and then at the very end I will go back to that bottom and I will wipe off anything that is still there so you can wipe off the glaze very easily with a sponge and water when it is dry so when you're done doing things for the day make sure you put the caps on nice and tight some of these get a little gunked up around the rim so feel free to clean those off and then all you have to do with your paint brushes um, is go over to a sink and clean them um, with off with water and just leave your sea form somewhere where it will be safe and uh, let it dry.